Hello everyone. This is Shiraz Ahmed Khan, your host of this video. Viewers, today we are starting MS Word for the very first time. But before starting MS Word or any other computer software, we'll have to understand the two basic input devices which are almost necessary for our computer systems and their names are keyboard and mouse and after discussing these two devices we'll jump to the ms word and in today's video we'll understand the interface that is presented to us just after starting ms word so let's start today's video with the introduction to the first basic input device that is keyboard viewers we use keyboard to enter textual data by textual data we mean anything that can be typed with the help of keys on the face of the keyboard in front of your screens right now a traditional keyboard is being displayed although the keyboard of the laptop is a bit different from the one that is on your screens generally a traditional keyboard we call it qwerty keyboard because of the sequence of the first five keys in the alphanumeric keypad portion of the keyboard q w e r t y just because of this sequence the name of this traditional keyboard is qwerty keyboard a keyboard has four main parts if we take start from the top area of the keyboard this portion is known as function keypad it has 12 keys starting from f1 to f12 and the function of these keys is usually different from software to software but some of the functions of these keys remain static and for rest of the keys the behavior the function that is associated with each and every function key it's different from software to software the second major area of the keyboard which is having the maximum number of keys including all the alphabets from a to z the control keys shift control alt windows space bar and along with the digits pronunciation punctuation marks special symbols this area is known as alpha numeric keypad if we further move on to the right side of this alphanumeric keypad we can see the four arrows along with some other keys like insert home and delete page up page down this area is known as cursor movement keypad this name is given to this portion because with the help of these keys we can control the movement of the cursor in our applications in the rightmost area we have numbers with us along with the mathematical symbols and this area is known as num or numeric keypad so viewers this is all about the physical structure of keyboard now moving on we'll see the structure of the mouse we hold mouse with our right hand and this is the area where we place our left most finger of our right hand and if you press it once we say that it's left click or simply click in the middle we have a wheel we call it mouse wheel and it is used for scrolling in the document by scrolling we mean moving upwards 
downwards, rightwards or leftwards. Similarly, on the right side, we press this key with our index finger and the event that is associated with this key is known as right click. Usually, we use right click to open the context menu and the context menu and its options vary from object to object. Actually, I mean to say that if you are right clicking onto a file, you can see different options. If you are right clicking in the blank empty area of the desktop, you will see a different context menu with different options. So right clicking is basically to open the properties of an object. So three events we have discussed so far regarding the mouse, left click, scrolling, and the right click. And along with this, if you press the left button of the mouse twice speedily, we say that we are double clicking. Left click is used to select something and double click is used to open or execute a program or a software. So viewers, we should have this basic understanding before starting MS Word and uh, I tried to give you an, a quick overview of both of these basic input devices. We call them input devices because we use them to give input to the computer system. So uh, this is for the keyboard and the mouse. Now it's the time to start MS Word for the very first time in a sequel of these video lectures. Viewers, let me tell you that there are different methods of starting MS Word or any other software, but keeping in view the different scenarios that the viewers they may have, I'll jump to the quickest and comparatively the easiest way to start any software or in particular MS Word. If you look at the taskbar, next to the start button we have search bar. Click inside the search bar with the help of mouse and when you click inside the search bar you can see different options the pop-up menu is appearing but ignore it for the time being and start typing the word word ms word there is no need to type ms with it just start typing with the word w o and just after typing few characters of this word it will pop up it will filter microsoft word 2013 in my case it could be different in your cases it could be word 2010 or 2007 or 16 and so on so forth but the thing that is mandatory for this is that your computer systems should have microsoft office installed into them so once you see this there is no need to type the complete word or word 2013 when you see this icon on your screens, just move your mouse pointer and click onto it. Just after clicking onto it, it's basically a command for the computer system that we want to start Microsoft Word. And after starting Microsoft Word, you will see this screen on your computers. Uh, on the right side, we have different inbuilt templates which are already developed by the developers of Microsoft Word for our convenience because they know in advance that the users they frequently use these sort of templates and on the left pan the bluish pan we can see that we can open any other stored document or the documents in which we were recently working you can see them on your screens. If you're starting Microsoft Word for the very first time and nothing is saved in your computer system, you won't see any options there in the recent list of the documents. So uh, today we are opening a blank document in Microsoft Word 
and in order to open the blank document you just need to click this blank document option and once it's clicked Microsoft will open will present a blank document in Microsoft Word currently we can say that Microsoft Word is successfully launched and a new blank document that is not saved on your disks is opened along with the Microsoft Word. Now before we start working into the documents we'll have to understand this whole Microsoft Word screen so that we can understand the terms the technical terms which are associated with this software. If we take start from the top you can see that the word document one dash word is written. This is basically the title bar. Viewers title bar contains the name of the file and the name of the software in which that file is opened. Along with it on the rightmost top area we can see the close button. If you press it once Microsoft Word, Microsoft Word will exit and all the open files will be closed. I'll come back to this point in the next video but for the time being you just need to understand one thing that this close button is used to exit Microsoft Word. On its left side we have an icon a button and currently the words restore down are written. If you click it once the Microsoft Word will come back to its original size and now the icon of the button is changed and the caption is changed as well it's changed <laughs> to maximize now. If you click it click this icon or button now it will be maximized. Next to it we have the minimize option. If you click it Microsoft Word will not exit rather will be minimized to the taskbar. I am clicking it. Look it's minimized to the taskbar. In order to maximize or reopen it again you will have to go to the taskbar. Find this Microsoft Word icon and click it again. It will be maximized and will be shown on your screens again. Under the title bar we have few words starting from home, insert, design, page layout and so on so forth. All of these are tabs. Home is a different tab, insert is a different tab, design is a different tab and similarly rest of the words they have their own options inside them. By default home tab is selected. If you want to select any other tab you'll have to just click over it once. That tab will start showing its options and we can say that insert tab is selected now. If you go back to the home tab furthermore in every tab different icons or options are placed after grouping them. For example in home tab if we start from the left side we have the first group and its name is clipboard and the clipboard further contains paste option, cut, copy, format painter. Similarly we have font group, we have paragraph group, we have styles group and finally we have editing group in the home tab. Similarly if you click any other tab like design tab you can see the design tab is again divided into different groups or sections starting from document formatting ending at page background. So we can say that each tab is divided into different groups or sections and each group or section contains different options inside it. Then we have two rulers. One is known as the vertical ruler and one is known as the horizontal ruler. We'll discuss these in the later videos that what is the function of 
horizontal ruler or the vertical ruler but for the time being you just need to understand it that both of these are rulers one is vertical and one is horizontal ruler at the bottom of the microsoft words screen you can see a blue strip basically it's a blue horizontal bar and its name is status bar status bar gives us information about our document for example it says page one of one which means that there are one pages currently there is only one page in our document and we are working on page one of one there are zero words in our document the language that is chosen for this document is english united states and similarly with the passage of time we'll explore the options given on the right side of the status bar so viewers this is all about the microsoft words initial introdu introduction and the last thing that i would like to share with you is this white page and where we can type anything and a vertical line is blinking there this area is known as text editor or editor only the word is derived from the text editor means we can edit we can make modifications in the text over here and the last thing is the difference between the mouse pointer and the cursor viewers mouse pointer you can observe that when you move your mouse with your hand in any direction a pointer moves on the screen in the same direction it is called mouse pointer and its movement can be controlled with the help of mouse similarly a vertical black blinking bar is appearing and disappearing and its technical name is cursor its movement can be controlled with the help of keyboard as well as mouse but preferably it should be done with the help of keyboard so viewers that's it for today if you like this video please do press the thumb icon and do not forget to subscribe the channel Stay blessed. Thank you very much.